It's time for another carrier product update. Tune in as we talk directly to the carriers about their new plans, any new network options they have, or which plan designs offer the most savings, and learn about the tools and resources they offer to help you generate more business. Visit our website to learn about all of the carriers we quote in our carrier product update series. Welcome back to our carrier product update series. I'm your host, Jason Powers, here with Legacy Brokers, and I've got Tom Stein from American Trust Administrators with me today. Hi. Excited to uh, share some content about their product that Mary share with you. Before we get started, if you're not familiar with American, not familiar with Legacy Brokers, you're going to get familiar with American <laughs> Trust here shortly. But if you're not familiar with us here at Legacy Brokers, we're a general agency uh, located in the Kansas City market, but our reach is really on a national basis. I think we've got, uh, we've got producers in 17 states. Across the country. Uh, and our whole mission really is to support everything that health insurance agents are doing out in the market. Our specialty is group health insurance, and really our focus in that group health arena is on self funded group health plans. Uh, our staff here is a great team of resources available for all agents to help you build, protect, and preserve your book of business out in the market. Uh, I got my start in this industry in 2000, actually working at American Trust Administrators. We've talked about that before. Yeah. Uh, I was the National Sales Director at, at ATA. I've also served in various roles in the health underwriters. Uh, if, you're, if you're not a member of health underwriters, I certainly encourage you to uh, consider joining. It's, a great, it's always been a great asset to me uh, with, with plenty of, of great contacts and good network available throughout. Uh, I also serve as an investment committee chair on the board of directors for Barton Mutual Insurance Company. Uh, that's about as close to the PNC as I come. I don't, uh, don't generally do anything else in the PNC world. Uh, and when I'm not doing uh, what I do here uh, at Legacy or I'm not, uh, not in the insurance world, I spend a lot of time on the soccer fields uh, with four boys that are all in some way connected to the game of soccer. Um, and, uh, and then I... The rest of whatever energy I have left, I give to my wife uh, of the last 42 years. Uh, today, I've got with me a good friend of mine uh, who I've uh, come to, to know and, and, and respect over the last 10 years, uh, Tom Stein from American Trust. Hey, how are you? Uh, my name is Tom. Thanks, Jason. Um, yeah, a little bit about me. Uh, I basically take, took Jason's chair at American Trust Administrators uh, as the National Director of Business Development. Um, I am a lifetime on a TPA guy. My first sales call was in uh, eighth grade with my dad. So at this point, I've got a bit of experience. I'm still learning the ropes, uh, but uh, every day we get a little bit better. Um, uh, you went into a little demographic. I am happily married, uh, beautiful wife, little dog. That's 85 pounds. Um, little with me, I guess. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, life is good here in Kansas City. and. Um, Got my picture up there with me on a camel, which uh, I don't know. Life's an adventure, so you got to go with it. So, but uh, yeah, I'm excited to have you here. And this isn't your first time on. Is uh, you've been uh, you're a return uh, return guest for us. Like honored sure. guest. Yeah, honored guest. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like <laughs> it's kind of like the Saturday Night Live uh, on it, right? You know, this is your third time on no, the show. And I was actually wondering as we walked in here, are we going to put people who have been on the oh, podcast? Yeah. Right, That's a great idea. right. Right? Line the line the wall with all the pictures of Hall of Honor. That's right. Yeah. I love the idea. Building out the studio. Yeah. Well, now that you know a little bit about Tom and I, it's a, it's a great time to tell us about yourself. Uh, so, in just a moment, our DJ Josh is going to launch a poll to uh, ask you some questions about who you are. Uh, how would you define your role or responsibility as a licensed insurance agent in the, uh, in the world of insurance? And this helps us, I think, really just kind of determine, you know, as we build out content uh, throughout the year, um, how do we how do we really best serve uh, the agents that are, that are coming to our events, uh, logging into our uh, carrier product update series, uh, so that we can really uh, understand your business model, which helps us understand how how to be how to better serve those agents. Sure. All right, we'll give it just a few more seconds here. Go ahead and end that poll for me, Josh. Looks like we've got, uh, 
We got about fifty-seven percent participating in the in the poll, and half of those are group health insurance agents. So that's great. Uh, we got some other uh, other uh, industry professionals on, so we appreciate your uh, joining us this morning. I'm going to stop there. All right. Uh, this is our carrier product update series. Throughout the year, we have other events. Just as you registered for this event, you can register for all our events on our website at LegacyBrokersKC.com under the events tab. Uh, you'll see there on the screen, we've got up, another upcoming carrier product update uh, an episode with our carrier product update series with Beam Dental. Uh, and then we launch straight into our CE classes uh, starting with Self-Funded University. It's a three-part series starting on April 13th through April 27th, every Wednesday uh, from there on. Three weeks in a row, uh, we'll start with Self-Funded University Part 1, which is the basics of self-funding. Uh, the uh, Part 2 is how to read and analyze self-funding quotes, and then we'll wrap it up on the third week with Part 3, uh, where we, uh, we dive into how to read and analyze self-funded claims reports because they're not all the same. Process for today, you are not playing Wordle. Uh, you are on mute though. We are in a Zoom environment. Um, we do want you to participate though. So if you've got questions relative to the topic today, uh, be sure to use the Q&A feature in the Zoom app controls at the bottom of your screen. Uh, you can also use the chat feature to chat with with Josh behind the scenes about any technical issues you might be having with sound or video. Uh, and then if you just want to chime in, you have any questions, feel free to use the raise hand feature uh, in Zoom and Josh will bring you on live, unmute you so that you can, uh, you can ask and get your questions answered directly from Tom here from ATA. I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> After today, if you have questions for me, feel free to reach out. I think uh, if you've been on some of our past episodes or past CE classes, you should have my contact information. You probably get lots of emails from me throughout the year. Uh, be sure to join the conversation on LinkedIn by following Legacy Brokers on LinkedIn. We do share a lot of our content in that capacity. So not only email, but, uh, but also follow us on LinkedIn. Don't forget to give us a five-star Google review. I say this every time. Uh, we certainly appreciate the reviews that we've had so far. And, and if you like what you see here, uh, it helps. It certainly helps us uh, to continue to deliver good content to other agents across the country. And for, for a myriad of reasons, continue to use our website, legacybrokerskc.com for other resources. When we finish this video, we'll actually post it to the carriers tab. Under, uh, under the uh, carriers tab, we'll post to ATA's page. This video, along with supporting marketing documentation and other materials that will certainly aid uh, your ability to sell ATA's product. So ATA, we talk about it, uh, ataamerica.com is the site, American Trust Administrators is the company, AmeriShare is the product. What For those that don't know who ATA is, Tom, who's ATA? Well, uh, ATA is a small family, oriented and owned TPA and MGU in Kansas City. Uh, we serve across the country, um, but we are independent. That's the biggest thing that we have is we are an independent shop. We do things uh, our way, uh, which allows us to do some really crazy, beautiful things with uh, plan design, with uh, how we handle our refunds, with uh, how we handle multi-year retention. There's some really cool things that we're able to do because we stay independent, um, because we stay in like a family-oriented company. Um, like I said, mentioned earlier, my first sales call was with my dad, you know, Big Tom. Um, and we've been in this space, uh, actually this year, ATA turns to Wow. So uh, pretty exciting. Um, we covered helicopters at first, not self-funding, but uh, <laughs> a little different transition there. But yeah. uh, you know, we've been doing the self-funding especially the small group self funding for about 36 years now. So we're, if not the oldest, I don't know who's been doing the, the small group stuff for longer. Um, but on that customizable vein, we've got uh, multiple options that we can run, whether it be um, you know, deductibles, co-insurance, drug cards, um, Spectrum, Agter. The reason why we do all those things is that we try to make it 
for the trained GA and trained broker as easy to lift from where they currently are to where they want to be. And so by offering these options, they can get a true apples to apples. And then it's, hey, it's not, this is a different deductible, this is a different drug card, but it's a different price. It's everything's the same and we're still better off. Um, and then when you get deeper into the weeds, this is where we kind of shine, is you have a much lower fixed cost. And for, for those of you out there who are newer to self-funded or level funded, there's always, and I'm probably going to do the university, obviously, but um, there's two categories of cost, the fixed and claims. And whenever you look at ours, you'll have a pretty big spread um, compared to others of our fixed account and our claims account. You have a lot of money going into claims. Uh, I know I'm talking a lot here, Jason, but uh, no, no, I would. I mean, I would say that's probably your big differentiator, right? Is, I mean, if you're if you're comparing to the boot, it's the big, mm -hmm. uh, big carrier model plans. Sure. Uh, would you agree that it really comes down to how they structure their fixed costs versus how you sure? Structure? And the other thing is, you know, that structure is huge, absolutely. And what it allows you to do is look multi-year because. At one point, if you're just looking, all right, I've got 10 grand in my claims account, okay, no big deal. Hey, I've got 40. All of a sudden, you're ballast against all of these uh, increases that are coming year, year one, year two, year three. So you are able to keep your cases in the same place. Uh, and by doing that, as the broker, you have great opportunities to have additional products, or you can go out and prospect for them because you have more time because you're not getting hammered. Yeah. That's, the, that's the approach we've always taken. It's a longer term approach. Um, but it's something we're, we're proud of. Yeah, I, and, and you know, uh, on the screen here, we're talking, you, know, you guys always refund 100% of the unused claims dollars. That's right. Uh, and that's, I think that's another differentiator for AmeriShare versus some of the other carrier models is there's always some catch where, okay, the group had a great year and then they got a 10% increase and the only way that they can get the money out of their surplus is if they take it. It takes a 10% increase. increase with ETA and the Merisher product. That's not true. Yeah, Stockholm syndrome is what you're really looking at is, hey, it's your money, but uh, you got to give us more of it to get it back. Yeah. That's not, that's kind of hostage a little bit. We don't, we don't do that. We never have. Uh, as long as the Stein's in charge, we never will. Um, that's something that really goes back to a fundamental principle, which is it's not our money. It's the plan's money. It's the business owner's money. It's not ours. So as long as we make sure that we keep that going, then we're going to be better off long term. Uh, I mean, it would be nice for us to do that. But I don't have a jet. I don't need one. <laughs> um, well, you meant, you mentioned it too. I think it, I think it allows uh, it allows a producer to build out a multi year strategy with those with those groups that do end up having a surplus at the end of a good, good plan year instead of having to bounce around for you. Yeah, um, and then reporting. Uh, we, we, we actually cover ATA's reports in our self-funded university part three. We actually take a deep dive in the claims cool. cool. All right. Uh, what's the frequency on that? So we do it quarterly. Um, and remember on your claims reports, you're going to have a thing called IVNR. You know, I'm getting nerdy here. I am a nerd about this stuff. Um, so really the first quarter when you get that, you're really going, only going to have Rx on there. Sure. And then it basically catches up. That's why you're going to want to put your plans on a longer than 12 month contract because you have that window. Um, when you start looking at those reports, the third quarter's report, you can get a pretty good idea of where they're gonna be on their uh, claims account utilization. And then from there, where they're gonna be for the remainder. Yeah. So if you stay ahead of these things, life becomes so much easier. Um, and we give you the reports so that you can you choose to. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's ATA as a company that We've kind of talked about uh, product a little bit. What, I, I, you know, AmeriShare, it's always been AmeriShare. Mm -hmm. um, what, again, what's the differentiator there in the product? In the product itself, you know, the big thing that we do uh, is that we, this is a good and a bad thing. Everything's a trade off. Um, we underwrite medically to the individual, which from, and I'll hit the negative first, from the negative standpoint, is it's a little bit more time consuming, right? From the positive standpoint is it gives you a more accurate idea of where those claim dollars are actually gonna go. And so by doing that, you have a more accurate uh, price point and because you have a uh, implied loss ratio by state regulations, you have more money inside of those claims accounts. 
And so that's a long-winded way of saying that we price it accurately. Yeah. And because we price it accurately, that additional dollar is going to come back to you because we refund 100%. So if you do a little bit more work up front, it pays in spades down the channel. That's a huge deal on our product. It's a huge deal on why people stay with us, is that that work up front pays dividends for years down the road. Um, a couple other things that kind of best fits for clients. Um, we have a five minimum in a lot of states. Some states, it's a little different. Yeah. Five is kind of the baseline. Um, and this isn't <laughs> unique to ATA, but in level funding, you want to have somebody with moderate to good health, right? And then you also uh, want an average age of somewhere below 50. The further you get down, the better off you're going to be. Sure. Um, and then the other one is you want to have a stable company. You know, again, that's important for looking down the road. Uh, a lot of the things that we do in our plan design and on our underwriting is trying to stay ahead of problems rather than just saying yes and then buying problems three, six, eight months down the road. We'd rather be a little bit tougher up front and then have a longer term relationship with that client and that broker. Because at the end of the day, there's always, there's always going to be issues if you don't do the work up front. So if you do the work up front, you can stay ahead of so many and the life is so much easier. Yeah, I'd say the other, the other product uh, differential, I think, in the, in the market for Amerishare is the flexibility in the plan. It's not, you know, it's not uh, like some of the other carrier models where we get a grid mm -hmm. of the plans that we can choose from. You know, there really is a lot of flexibility in ATA's approach. Uh, and the, the, the refund piece is probably the biggest one. I think for agents that are selling self-funded in the, in the market, uh, knowing that ATA is going to do uh, what's right by the client by returning the plan assets back to the plan mm -hmm. instead of keeping a portion of that, uh, that's just, that, that, that sells itself on a spreadsheet. Yeah. yeah. And speaking on, on the spreadsheet, and uh, we were chatting about this beforehand, but I, I love this. We have all of our plans are customized, right? And there's over a million options if you put it all together yeah. for your plan design, which <laughs> I'm not saying that you're not one in a million, but it, come on, <laughs> right? Right? Like there's a right. ton of options for you out there. And so, you know, you can find one that will work for their specific situation. And from a sales standpoint, you can match what they currently have, which yeah. is that's much easier from the sales process standpoint. To say I've got apples to apples. So we hear, we hear, you know, we hear, and we probably talk about groups and their ability to get refunds. I know some agents look at some of the, the carrier model plans and don't really talk about the potential for refund because of the way the fixed cost is structured. But with ATA, we we do we talk about the potential for the refund and surplus dollars. What's the what's the average? Well, you got it up there, right? right? Uh, and that's we're very proud of this, right? And what we have is, this is 2018, um, 2019, there was a little bit better percentage, a little lower do dollar amount. That's a lot of money. If you look at a 20-man group and you go into the business owner and you say, all right, I've got 13 grand here. For you. That's the difference between him having to change the amount that he's paying for his employee benefits, or it could be him buying a brand new uh, you know, fork truck. I don't know what your cost, but you get my point, right? More than, more than, more than, more than 13. So um, maybe three jet skis. Yeah. Like you're basically, you're putting something back in his pocket. From a broker standpoint, when you walk in with that amount of money, you're no longer the guy selling something. You're a partner. I mean, you're delivering value that nobody else is even talking about. And if that guy doesn't love you at that point, well, I, mean, I don't know how you're going to get that guy to love you. Like that's a huge deal. And on our traditional plans, we have, uh, I believe it was 72% in 2019, which by the nature of runout, it's the most recent data we have. And that's incredible, right? Like the amount of things that you can do from a secondary sales standpoint, the amount of things that you can do from building that relationship with a broker with those dollars, that are the plane's dollars, right? It's their money anyway. You're putting it back in their pocket. They get it directed. They get to add additional benefits for their employees. Everybody's freaked out about employees leaving right now. Well, I would not change cash flow and give them more benefits. Right? This doesn't, right? I mean, if you think of if you think of what 13,000 would represent in the in a, in a small employee, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, who's probably, you know, on the generous side, the employer may pay $300 a month for an employee to have benefits. Yeah. Sure. That's three more employees they can afford to pay for. What does that, you know, what does that do for their growth? What does it do for their company to add three more employees that provide benefits for without changing I think the bottom line? Yeah. Yeah. You know, instead adding those employees maybe increases production for them where they can generate more revenue. Or maybe it reduces turnover, which helps. AT, we, we're blessed. We have very long-term employees, right? And some of that, I think, is, you know, I think we take pretty good care of our people. And that makes us more effective. If you can get out there and retain the people that are already on your team, you know, life is so much easier, so much easier. And this is just another option for you to utilize. Um, and it doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to buy it against next year's you know, renewal or anything along those lines. Mm -hmm. It's your money. Now, you want to use it inside of the, you know, bit of a trust agreement, some other technical stuff, but there's, it's your money. Well, we talked, we talked that the, the, the AmeriShare is a flexible plan and, and, you know, as a general agency, I think we, we see somewhere north of five, 600 RFPs a year, uh, maybe, maybe more than that. Just, there are quite a few cases that we're looking at on a regular basis. And one of the things that's really easy to do with some of the other carrier models is just look at a plan grid. Here's, you know, here are three options that kind of fit uh, what you're looking for from a, from a plan design. But with ATA, you mentioned, you know, a million and a half different variations. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of plan design. So, so I mean, it really is customized there's not a there's not a bronze silver gold platinum kind of level plans it's you can you can mix and match just you're 100 right there so it's you, know, you choose um the easiest from a sales process the easiest way to go is if you have existing coverage sure. let's match it let's keep it excuse me really simple and say all right you're with um a fully insured carrier and you're on x y and z well, if we move you over to a self-funded, level-funded model, what's the difference? Here? Right. And then you also have to keep in mind the, the claims account. Um, and that's the easiest way to go from a new version group, which in these really small groups, there's a lot of people who are having to offer health coverage to their troops simply because they're having that crazy turnover. And so you go into them and say, all right, here's what you have. Here's what you think it's going to cost uh, from, the, from the fully insured type. Let's go ahead and produce something and then let's play with the plan design for what specifically goes on inside of that group. And yes, it's a little bit more you know, research uh, for the broker to go in and talk to the business owner. But again, we're looking long term here. Yeah. You know, one more conversation to get something a little bit better it stays ahead of noise, it stays ahead of those issues that cause people to shop. You know, if they're happy, they're not moving. Yeah. So let's do the work up front and then keep them happy. Well, we, 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 we cover in our, um, one of our CE classes we teach is the Big Six Group Health Insurance. Another one is the Group Health Care Strategy. And in both of those, uh, both of those classes we teach um, the discovery need, how critical it is to really be on the same side of the table as the employer. Mm -hmm. What you draw from that in, 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 in coming back to AmeriShare as a product option is if an employer says, Employees love the plan. I just wish we could get a little bit lower out of pocket. You know, but the deductible at fifteen hundred—that's perfect. Gosh, can we get can we get a plan that doesn't have an eighty-one hundred dollar out of pocket? And if you're looking at some of the carrier model plans, they're predetermined. Sure, at an actuarial value of bronze, silver, gold, platinum, whatever whatever it is. With ATA and Marisher, you could you could go in and customize that out of pocket. You mm -hmm. could drop the out of pocket. You can change the co-insurance levels. You can change the co -pays. You can put a different drug card in. You put a really rich drug card in with a really high deductible plan. Yeah. And do yeah. the opposite. You can, again, a million and a half different variations. It, I don't think a lot of, a lot of times when I say that to agents, they don't, they don't grasp it. But knowing what we see in the quoting system, we can run it. Like, <laughs> yeah, there's, I mean, you can continually try to build uh, something that's more accurate to the needs of the client. I mean, that's, that's the end of the day. Like, you want to build something as perfect to the client as possible. And so the better you get it, the more likely are they that they're going to be happy. 
and the more likely that you're going to have a long-term relationship with that client, then year over year, you can go back and serve it. Everybody knows sales is easy. Prospecting is ridiculously tough, yeah. right? So if you have your clients, let's help you keep them. Right. Because ah, prospecting, yeah, you get the point. Yeah. You get the point. And it may not be a plan design. It may, it may not be deductible or co-insurance. It might be a network. Right? That's so, right. And that's, that's another place where you guys fill in the blanks. Yeah, yeah, we, we we play with multiple different PPOs. Um, it depends on where you are for which one works. Um, we have, you know, oh man, I can't tell you how many PPO contracts we have, but we have a bunch. And so you can plug and play wherever feels appropriate, feels like the best need for your client. That's where the GA comes in. Because you guys are gonna know the local data, you know what that client needs right there. Um, in addition to that, we also have RBP, which, We've been doing RVP for a while. Um, it is a very good solution sometimes. It's very tough sometimes. Um, but again, if you set the table, it can be a great long-term solution. The big issue is how do you set the table and how do you uh, stay ahead of the issues um, that are going to pop up? But, yeah. I was speaking with um, a broker out of uh, Jackson um, Hole, right? He wanted to look at an RVP option. And it was not a good fit um, simply because Jackson Hole doesn't have you know, yeah. RVP providers. You know, so it's a fold them once. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah they, a, lot, a lot of providers are in those rural markets mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. make it difficult. Uh, but I think, you know, the tools that you guys have got available, we'll talk about one of them here in a moment, but the tools that you guys got available in the RVP space, and the fact that you've been in that space, it's, you're not new. To no. Space. no. You've been doing it for a while now. Uh, should give brokers that are just now coming around to the concept of RVP, which is taking away the net, reimbursing providers after the services are rendered at a percentage of Medicare. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if there's pushback, negotiating with the provider from there to really sell on what, what's fair for that service in that market yeah. uh, versus starting with a, a PPO contract that's predetermined and is, you know, some variation of a discount off of a rack. Yeah. yeah. So it's, again, it's, you have it actually perfectly correct. Yeah, it's, it's, you have uh, the PPOs, which is a you know, negotiated contract at a time. And then it's almost like a big circle mm -hmm. where innovation goes in a big circle in our industry. And RVP is like indemnity on different pricing structures. Yeah. Um, it's not perfect, but in some situations it works really well. In some it doesn't. I wouldn't do it. But if you know ahead of time, stay ahead of it. Again, Building for long term service with the client. Yeah. And uh, that's what we've got on, uh, I think we're going to cover the amino, right? Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. Um, cool, cool new feature that I'm super excited about is th those are the kind of questions that we get from agents. Wow, I know. Mm -hmm. What providers are going to be our uh, You mentioned indemnity, which is funny because I, you know, I, I can nerd out about why we would never want to quote an indemnity plan, but here we are quoting RVP, which is. A variation of an indemnity. Plan. I was no contract, right? I was no contract on the yeah. front end, but now we got a tool to negotiate with those providers on the back end and success in using that tool. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, as a general agency, we've got multiple cases across the country that we're using RVP, they're using it successfully. They do have, things, but you've got ways to help them out. Yeah. Speaking of nerding out, I could nerd out about self funded, right? Uh, the other thing that I really like about the, the, um, the customization in the AmeriShare world is that. It's not just a one-size-fits-all level-funded program. Now, brokers that are out there that are just kind of getting comfortable with level funding, you have the ability to build. We have the ability to build that product uh, in a level-funded space, but that's not all you need. Yeah, yeah, and that's it. Uh, and when we go back to, we had the slide up there a minute ago with the refund. Okay. And so those dollars are inside of a income benefit customer. So how do you utilize those dollars in the most effective way? This is where most people start to look at true uh, or self funded with stop loss programs where they'll do their claims as needed, right? Or as incurred. And so what you have is a different way to run the exact same plan uh, where you can use last year's dollars at this current year's expenses. And that's incredible, right? Uh, and there's a, there's a, it's real simple, um, but it's called minimum funding. And I don't want to scare anybody. It's a simple program. You're using money from previous years and most of the time. Or if you have a client that is 
uh, financially savvy enough, right? So think CPAs, um, think financial services firms. They understand accrual accounting and you can run it as a minimum base. And then if they, as long as they put that money, at least a portion of it aside as like an uh, unfunded liability that they'll fund on their own books, then you've got a way to move forward through it um, without having to have all those dollars go to the plant. So there's, there's multiple options to do these things and we open them up for the client. Um, and again, it goes back to the broker and how, how deeply they want to serve the customer and how much the need is there for them to uh, you know, realize cash flow at certain times. Again, we're open to it. Yeah. Our, our chassis is open. Yeah, so I mean, we, we talk about it in our self-funded university that there's different you know, different models, the level funded versus say an ASO or pay as you go kind of model. And that minimum funded um, capability in air share really speaks to that pay as you go. It, yeah, it could be cash flow, it could be uh, a number of reasons that an employer would be sophisticated enough to want to go down that path. But it, level funded is almost that train, like the yeah. self funding on training wheels and then moving into. Um, the page go model that, that is an air shares minimum funded options. It's a great tool to build out a long term strategy with a client versus getting stuck in that again churn. Yeah, are you are you being held hostage to that self funded plan because there's there's a refund coming only if you take the increase at the end of the year. Yeah, uh, and that's that's certainly a big differentiator for great plan. So we 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 hinted at it and I'm. You know, Excited about it because uh, I do pay attention. On you released notes to the field, yeah, yeah, uh, on LinkedIn, and uh, it caught my eye because it was something, uh, something new about RVP. And I know you guys are, are, are really out front, being innovators in that space. So talk to us about Amina. Sure. So uh, Victoria's not here to bail you. I know, right? She's our in-house expert. <laughs> uh, for those of you who saw us on on LinkedIn, yeah, Victoria Armstrong. Uh, she's great. Um, in fact, I believe you hired her. I did. Well, um, so she's, yeah, she's sticking around. Uh, don't you dare. The, um, but she walked us through the amino program and on, we've got a couple RVP providers. Uh, this one is with Zealous and they use the amino program. And what we can do is ahead of time, like the broker that was working with Jackson, we can look and see if it's going to be uh, a decent fit or if it's going to be one that we probably want to avoid unless there's absolute necessity on, on cost. And so whenever you're looking at a, uh, a group, and let's say that they are very price sensitive, that they need lower cost. Okay, RBP is one of those options that can be a pretty big cost reduction, right? But you want to stay ahead of it from a relationship standpoint from the broker, because RBP can be very noisy. And so if you look at uh, a tool like Amino, when you jump on there and you type in the zip code, and you say, all right, I'm looking for um, X, Y, or Z. You can see which providers in that geographic area have already accepted an RVP reimbursement, right? It's not, a, they're not contract, no, but these are ones that uh, it's basically like almost saying a safe harbor. If you go here, you're going to be okay. And if you communicate that with your uh, employees uh, from a business center standpoint or from your clients from the broker standpoint, and they're going to have less noise overall. Sure. You're going to have better experience, and they're going to have a longer retention. Rate, which I know I talk about retention all the time. That's that's our business model. We retain things. You're, you're building intelligence, right? Uh, you're, you're, you're you're taking the market, what the market's giving you, yeah, as far as feedback on the RVP model, and building out uh, from a user experience in a PPO model. What is the user supposed to do? Make sure you stay in that work. Well, how do yeah. you do that? Well, you got to go to this website. You got to look up the providers. So as an industry, we've conditioned members over the last 25 years to go to a website, look up your providers. That's who you can go to. In an RBP model, we said, you can go anywhere. You don't have to worry about it. You can go anywhere. And what happens is then we get market feedback from the provider community saying, well, we don't, we're not going to agree to 125% Medicare or 150% Medicare, mm -hmm. we want 220% of Medicare or some other variation. With Amina, what we found is that, I mean, that, Josh, go ahead and pull that up. So, so you can actually go in, register for an account, uh, which I've already done, uh, and look up providers yeah. by, uh, by location. So 
just for like go to primary care. I've already done this. If you need help uh, as a broker out there in the community doing it, we can certainly get you connected. Um, not a difficult process whatsoever. It took me all of three minutes uh, by the time I verified my email. So Josh is pulling up here. Primary care providers in uh, in the Lenexa area where I've got, here's some providers right here that are, that are A rated on the RVP scale, meaning that they've already experienced an RVP uh, reimbursement model mm -hmm. and they're open to it and they, right. they didn't push back. Uh, B uh, in this rating scale is they gave a little bit of pushback. They didn't take the first offer, but they did end up settling at a more reasonable offer than the PPO. And then you've got some other grading, graded scales in there. Uh, and it doesn't matter what service you're looking for. I picked on primary care, but there's other services you can look at. You can look by location. You can look at by type of provider. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can do this throughout the country. And as yeah. they continue, as Amino continues to build that data, it only gets richer. It only gets better. What does it become? It becomes a brand. Yeah. It's not uh it's not saying that the contract. There's still a possibility that an A-rated uh, uh, RVP provider in this search will come back and balance bill, but the likelihood is probably less. Yeah. Uh, so they're not contracted. That's not goes against the RVP the, model. The bigger deal uh, from a long-term standpoint, from an industry standpoint, is the more that we steer consumption to these primary care providers, the more they're gonna be familiar with it, the more they're just gonna accept it as a practice, yeah. right? And so it's almost as if we're building a, a PPO network without having to you know, pay for these PPO fees and uh, crank up the cost of the plan and without having to reimburse these higher levels, which again, crank up the cost of the plan for the plan owner. So by doing, by doing the steerage, it makes it richer over time uh, for the end user or the member and it gives you less noise at a better cost. So again, REP can be perfect. It also can be very troublesome. It depends on where you are. So use the tool ahead of time and then figure out if it's going to be good for the client. Yeah. Yeah. If you're, and if you're thinking about RVP on the quote, if you've got quotes with RVP uh, from, from us here at Legacy, uh, particularly when you're using ATA's AmeriShare product, don't you know, don't forget to register for Amino so that you can do some, some front work, right? Do some work on the front end to educate members about how to use the tool, where they can go, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what providers would give them less noise and less, uh, less pushback. Uh, and, and, you know, even on my side, I was able to, um, to look up my provider and realize that the doctor that I go to and the, the PPO model I would, would, probably give some pushback based on the, the clinic they're affiliated with. So it gives me pause to consider, well, maybe, sure, you know, maybe, maybe there's a reason for me to look at RVP later for my own health care. Looks like we've got a question from, uh, from Mark Williams. What percentage of providers in the typical market are open to this model? Do we have any data on that? I don't have a hard answer to that. Um, open to it or accepting it on Amino are two separate things. Right. Um, the amino is not going to be a perfect catch. So if you have penetration in there where you've got a list of providers um, for the metro area, like Lenexa, which is a suburb of Kansas City, for those of you not familiar, uh, there's 26, I believe, listed. That seems rich to me. Yeah. Um, if you are in, uh, Mark, where, where are you? Spring, uh, Springfield. Springfield. Would you mind? Uh, yeah, Mike, search? Mark, we bring you on. Oh, you're doing a search in Springfield. Yeah, so go back. We're doing a quick edit, search. Edit, What's edit location? Oh, uh, I think I clicked that. The edit location button. Oh, hmm. and we haven't done this. So this is our first yeah. one here. Springfield. If we look at Springfield, we so have thirty-seven total. Thirty-seven total. Um, five none, no, no A rates. Uh, we got B rates, so they, so they at least uh, they have accepted it. They've accepted it. Um, maybe not, not, maybe not first pass, but they certainly. Accepted. That's right. So, on this one, yeah, I think Springfield would be something that I'd be open to if I was in Springfield, uh, just by looking at the uh, PCP or primary care providers. If you have specific other needs, the Amino will look for that as well. Um, but yeah, that's 
that's basically the, the hurdle is that if you can get over the first hurdle yeah. and say, hey, Springfield's pretty good. Another way to think about it in general, this is a, a way before Mina that I thought about it, is if you have multiple hospital systems in one town, then you're going to be better off. If you only have one provider, it's not a good, in general, it's not a good fit. Um, and just historically with ATA, that's what we've seen the most noise is when there's only one game in town. Um, and that's a, it's a tough thing to negotiate with because they always say, well, we're going to get Yeah. So use the amino. And then from the hospital system, I'd really recommend having at least two hospital systems. Yeah. You can play them off each other. Which is great. For Springfield. There are two. <laughs> yeah, there are two. <laughs> there are two. They're across so, the street from each other. Yeah, they love each other, too. That's what I hear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a great, uh, great question. So uh, outside of RVP and Amino, I know, my friend, I guess in addition to uh, something that you teased on uh, the last time you were here was, uh, was this new pilot, right. a level-funded pilot program. And uh, we couldn't really talk about it too much. We, we, we kind of tease about it. It's, it's, it's out there. We have, we have access to it here right. at Legacy, uh, which means that our brokers have access to it. Uh, what can you tell me about this new level funded pilot now that I now that I have logged this in? This is my baby, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've uh, been working on this for quite some time. Um, and what the pilot does is it produces a couple of things that are very actionable for the plan owner or the broker, right? And we try to make it as simple as possible. So all the information that the business owner should have um, at, at their disclosure right there without having to go to the member. Right. So you enter the census, uh, you ask a couple of questions. And again, some of these are trying to stay ahead of problems down the road. Right. Uh, you figure out their SIC, their zip. And if you, there you go, uh, you put these in there and you ask a couple of questions like, have they had medical insurance? What we're really looking for there is, is it a virgin group? Yeah. Right. Uh, is the workforce stable? What we're looking for there is massive participation changes. Right. Like lawn care companies, not a good idea. Right. Yeah. You're, you're uh, looking for turnover, are they? Are exactly. They, are they right. The revolving door of employees coming in every three months. Or... And is it, yeah, just continually cycling. So these are all questions that the business owner and the broker can answer there themselves, yeah. right? We're trying to reduce uh, the amount of unrealized work that the broker does. So then you ask that one question, which is how healthy is the group? And when you produce all of this together, it produces a level funded score, right? And that level funded score also produces a report that goes to the broker and the business owner and says, hey, you've got these conditions and it's all dynamic, right? It all reads what you put into it. Uh, you have these conditions, you have uh, this zip code, you have this industry, you have a fairly good score of working with level funded or you're a terrible candidate. Well, we're not pulling punches here. Right? We're letting the broker know which candidates are best fit for level funding and which ones should probably be on a furniture. Right. Again, we're trying to save them time. And then this is the big one. It loads an indication quote that goes to uh, goes out to the broker where it says here's what it's going to be, or roughly where it's going to be. You still need to do underwriting, um, but it allows them to say, all right, with this load, this industry characteristics, everything else, here's the rough score, and here's where we think they're going to land. And then you know as the broker, hey, do I chase this rabbit? No. Yeah. Or is are they already better with where they are? It's a great, it's a great kind of pre-qualification. Yeah. Pre-qualification. Think, think in terms like a credit score. You're talking about a level funded score now, right? So mm -hmm. this is, uh, this doesn't mean that it's been medically numbered. They still have to go through the apps. Uh, they still may have uh, telephone interviews, depending on what underwriting yeah. comes back back with after reviewing applications. But so many times I get asked, you know, do you think this group would be a good, a good prospect for level yeah. funded? Or I get, I get. Broker telling me, I think this is gonna be a great, great prospect for level funding. Well, let's let's put it to the test. Right? Yeah. Let's see what you know ATA system comes back with because there are certain things that you know. Why is industry important, right? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, there's so industries again. We're getting kind of nerdy, but um, go for it. I'm on it. Right? Dive in. Um, so you have your SIC, and what that says is the ratings either up or down over manual for the risk inside of that industry. Mm -hmm. An easy way to explain it would be, hey, if everybody's a CrossFitter, Billy's a little overweight. Well, what's that mean? Oh, he's got an extra six pounds. Okay, that's one thing. I'm not, this my, my example here, I'm not picking on anybody. Or, hey, Billy's a little overweight in the trucking industry. That's a completely different mental picture, right? right? And that's a great way to think about 
uh, how the SIC affects basically what the industry standards are and how that affects how the business owner is going to answer that final question yeah. as well, which is yeah. what is the health of the group? Well, compared to, everybody compares it to their own cohort, right? And, I, and again, I'm getting nerdy on that right here, but like if you ask the questions and you frame it in the right and the frame that they're, that they're currently in, you get more accurate information and we can save the broker more time on targeting the specific clients that are going to be able to be served and win by going with level five. That's the, that's the grail, man. Yeah. 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 And I mean, it's, it's not, it's not that the broker or the employer has to go out and ask a lot of questions on the front end. This is all stuff that they should have access to right away. Uh, if it's a broker that's current, that this is their current client, they probably know something, right? Is your phone ringing off the hook on this group uh, in their current fully insured plan because someone's having trouble getting prior authorization on a $6,000 a month of medication? It's probably not a good prospect. Yeah, <laughs> so, right. So funded. I mean, it could be depending on the right uh, PBM tools that you implement. Plan design, everything else. Plan design. Uh, but generally speaking, that would be something we want to know on the front end to see if they are a good prospect. Who's going through that underwriting process? It's tough. Yes. Yeah. And so I, I love this idea. I love the fact that we've got access to it now. And I love the fact we're, we're introducing and rolling it out to our brokers here in 2022. So if you've got a prospect who you're looking at today and you're thinking, is this a good fit for level funding? Ask for ask for the new level funded pilot from PTA. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll produce the scores and uh, get you an idea what that looks like. So you have something tangible. Mm -hmm. Now that you can go back and talk to that group about why you think they're a good fit for level funding or why you probably shouldn't go through this process instead of you looking at some of the other That's Yeah, that's options. the other way is that you can also use it to protect yourself from the broker standpoint. Hey, I've got 50 clients. Um, I've, I've only done fully insured in the past. Let's see which ones are a good candidate. Well, everybody talks. You move 15 over. And somebody talks to uh, you know, John and says, I say 20% this year. Um, why didn't you move me over? Well, we actually we talked about it. Here's your report. Here's why it's not a good fit. It's a credibility piece as well to the broker uh, and protecting themselves against being a DOR, which is the bane of every broker's system. Yeah. So a, re a reminder of what a good prospect looks like, what a good uh, fit for ATA. Sure. Sure. Um, we're looking at smaller group space. That's right. So five to 50, um, generally good health. Um, and we need a company that is uh, stable in, in terms of its workforce, right? More, again, we're trying to stay ahead of problems. Um, we try to look for the very long term. And if we can stay ahead of these issues, you're going to like us more uh, as the broker. And so does the plan owner. Um, so if you hit those three things, um, run through the pilot and see what the score is, and then we can shake it down the tree. Love it. Love it. Uh, a lot of exciting stuff uh, just in the last few weeks that we've talked about. Um, and if, I know in the uh, turn of the fourth quarter, we've got a new, uh, new stop loss carrier, right. new PM. Yep. What's, uh, what's on the horizon for ATA? Uh, the future is on the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, uh, we're working on, and I've got a couple of things that are going to be improvements to the pilot uh, that I'm still working on daily. Um, that will allow for even better efficiency for the brokers, uh, where you can know which cases are going to be um, uh, more helpful and less helpful. Uh, additionally, we have a couple of other things um, on plan design standpoint that will, uh, you mentioned kind of one with um, some RX stuff. Again, this is in the future, um, but it's, if you can't get excited about the future, I don't know what you get excited <laughs> about. So you don't have to spill any secrets. We can talk about it. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. There's some good stuff you're working on. I'm yep. excited about it because uh, it's a you know, ATA has always been a company that I feel like uh, serves serves a need in the industry that isn't isn't filled in some of the bigger uh, carrier model plans and uh, you know, groups that we've got that have been through. Most recently, a group that went through renewal, uh, had surplus, got a fair no change renewal on uh, on, on their Claims exposure mm -hmm. actually have a little, little bit of a reduction on the fixed cost side of things, which is unheard of in most cases when you're talking about 11 miles. Yeah. Right. Uh, and then to, to know that they've got that uh, surplus coming back as a refund, refund is the max fund of their liability, choosing to use that to uh, really offset 
they're what they're putting in this year. They're not putting in as much now. They have switched to minimum funded, and they're using the surplus to kind of circumvent uh, their liabilities and only fund as needed. Those are st strategic, creative things that you can do in the future five years. And we do some of those in old time programs. So, uh, super excited to continue our partnership and, and, and work toward launching whatever whatever may came come out of the ideas that he's had that brain <laughs> well you know we continue to get better yeah. uh we enjoy working with you guys and it's uh life's good life's good so mm -hmm. uh at, at this point uh if this is this kind of wraps up our our uh, presentation here if you've got questions feel free to ask those now raise your hand or throw them in the q a if you raise your hand i know that i'll we'll, we'll bring you on live and uh yeah. let you ask tom directly uh, if you have questions after today, don't forget to reach out to me. Um, you've got my contact info on the screen. Um, be sure to follow us on LinkedIn. We'll post uh, snips of this, uh, this actual product update, career product update on our LinkedIn. We'll actually post a link back to our website for the full video. Uh, you can also leave us a five-star Google review. Can't stress that enough. Love, uh, love those Google reviews. Uh, be sure to check out our website for additional resources where we'll, where we'll post. Um, additional marketing materials that are definitely beneficial in your efforts when you're selling ATAs of your product. Uh, we got one final question for everyone out there. Josh will launch that here. And this one is, uh, how can we connect after today? Just let us know if you want to be contacted in some capacity after today. We'll, uh, we'll be sure to reach out. Um, Otherwise, uh, be sure to join us for our next carrier product update coming up. Again, event registration link on our website. We're going to be talking to Joe Colorossi from Bean Dental. It'll be the first time he's ever visited Kansas City. I'm excited to have him in. Uh, and then we, we go straight into our, uh, our CE series, Self Funded University, starting April 13th. All right, and go ahead and end that poll for me, Josh. Now again, always a pleasure to see you. Thank you for the uh, for the gift that you brought in hey, you on the front end. I, uh, I totally forgot about our conversation about that. Mm -hmm. uh, look forward to seeing what's coming from ATA in the future. Uh, if you want to take a look at the Marishare proposal, or uh, you want to look at the uh, level funded pilot score on uh, on your next prospect, be sure to reach out. Otherwise, we'll see you. Oh, we do have another question coming in. Facilities. Are there any facilities in Kansas City that will not accept RBP? Yes. <laughs> yeah. There, there are facilities uh, that do not accept uh, reference-based pricing. Um, it's always, always good to, to know who those are. I couldn't list them off to you individually, but there are, mm -hmm. uh, there are facilities across the country that are not accepting reference-based pricing. And what, what's critical, I think, to know about uh, in, in the product your side of things is that you know we you guys have you're, you've got the back of the employer so you're you're working with uh, uh, third party companies like Zealous mm -hmm. like Six Degrees right. like uh, with these RBP adjudicators to then go negotiate those those services after they've been rendered with mm -hmm. those facilities that don't accept RBP and when, when when we say they don't accept RBP all we're saying is they're not taking the first offer. Yeah, right. There's there's some negotiation back and forth with the facility to settle on what they'll accept as payment. That's right. Oftentimes, where you end up with a facility like that is probably right back at PEO. Yeah, and then there's there's always different widgets that you can use to unwind that kind of position. The to the question of are there facilities that, that are not used? Yes, and you can't you can't force someone to take money. Yeah. But uh, after the services are rendered, there's a Fair standards we have to ethically negotiate and you have to negotiate. Um, and at the end of the day, it's still a business and they want to get paid. Uh, and so you just come to a number and that's that. Yeah. Um, but it's a lot easier if you just go to the ones that are already, you know, are already accepting it. Because um, the balance bill noise is the noise uh, that really affects you as the broker. Yeah. yeah. So great question. Again, finishing up, if you have any. Prospects you want to take a look at and, and see an Amerisher, a full Amerisher proposal, or uh, a prospect that you'd like to see a level funded pilot score or evaluation on, send those over to us. Until next time, 
on our next career update. Uh, I'm Jason Powers, and this is Tom Stein. We'll see you. Thank you for watching this edition of our Carrier Product Update Series. Visit our website to watch other episodes.